Number one says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDF. So Kieran knows that there's a sequence of rigid motions that takes one to the next. Um, so if this is true, then select all true statements after they do the transformation. So after the transformation is completed, would A coincide with F? And you can look in the statement here of which two triangles they say are congruent. So A is in the first spot, F is in the third spot. So those do not coincide. Um, so that's one way you can actually just look in the statement. You could mark up the picture if you wanted. So based on this statement, so A is gonna go to E. So I could just mark that here as congruent. B is the middle and D is the middle. So B and D. And then C would go to F. So you could have them marked up like that if you wanted. And then it says A goes to F and that's not true. Um, B goes to D is true. Segment AC coincides with EF, so AC and EF. So now you would check that those two angles are um, kind of the same. So this goes AC is the one tick to three tick angle. EF is the one tick to three tick, so those do coincide. Um, if you're looking at the statement, you would see A and C are on the outer parts of the statement. So are E and F, so they would coincide that way as well. You can also even write this below. So E, D, F, and just check A, C, E, F. They kind of land on top of each other. Um, does B, C coincide with E, D? So B, C with E, D, no. From the picture, you can see that. You can see that from this statement here. Here's B, C um, in the last two places, and then E, D is in the first two. Um, and then AB coincides with, whoops, AB coincides with ED. So AB is the first two slots, ED is the first two slots. So this would be true. All right, then in number two, it says a rotation by angle ACE. So let's look at that angle here. So rotation by angle ACE using C as the center point. So here's that angle. Um, takes triangle CBA onto CDE. So takes triangle CBA onto CDE by this angle rotation. Explain why the image of ray CA, so why would this ray, so CA, why would that ray so why would ray CA line up with ray CE? And you can see that, that, that those rays are created by this angle, or they're kind of the same angle as that um, angle ACE. So this is um, because that is how we defined our rotation. So we said to rotate it by angle ACE. So that side AC or ray CA would um, rotate over to ray CE. So we defined it like that. So explain why A will land on E. And so we know that these two triangles are um, congruent to each other because it's saying that it will take triangle CBA on to CDE. So because um, a rotation preserves um, lengths, we know that A and E are both the same distance from point C. So since A is the same distance away from C and E is the same distance away from C, A will land directly on E since they'll be on that same ray. And then is triangle CBA congruent to triangle CDE? Explain your reasoning. Yes, because a rotation will preserve length. 
and also um, we know that A will coincide with E, B will coincide with D, and C um, is the same in both. So all three vertices are, I'm just going to call it lined up. So the triangles are congruent. All right, then um, number three says these two triangles are congruent. Which sequence of rigid motions will take X, Y, Z on to A, B, C? So the first one says translate X, Y, Z using directed line segment Y, C. Okay, so it's going to take Y and bring it to C. Which are those, do those, um, are those corresponding is what we want to check out. So Y to C is corresponding. So we want those two to coincide. So that part's good. Then it, and let's see, let me actually draw this um, triangle here so we can move it. So then this would move here. So now we've got Y on C. And then it says using C as the center, okay, which is good because that's the one we have marked up. Um, rotate this new orange triangle so that X, which if you remember is right here. So here's X. So here's X prime coincides with B. So now they're saying rotate this so that this coincides here. Okay, which is good. That's what we want. So we want X to land on B. And so let's do that. So that X lands on B. And then it says now reflect this new triangle across the line CB. And here's the line CB. Reflecting it over will put um, Z onto A. So this first one is actually the correct um, sequence of rigid motions. So that was good. Um, if you're like me and you like it makes you nervous when the first one is the correct answer, you can um, look at the others to see where it goes wrong. So the first part here, translate using directed line segment YC is the same. So we kind of see the first same sentence in each one. So I'll leave this blue here. Then it says rotate using C as the center so that X coincides with B. That's the same. And then it says to reflect over line AC. And we saw that that was incorrect because we saw that the triangle was here. So we wanted to reflect over BC, not AC. Um, so that's the issue. So here's the issue for this one to be untrue. This one says rotates um, using C as the center so that X coincides with A. So now they're putting this angle on this one and those are not corresponding. So that would be bad. Okay, so it's wrong here. And then this next one or the last one says rotate using C as the center so that X prime coincides with A. So it says that again and those are not corresponding. So A was in fact the right one. Number four, triangle um, HEF is the image of FGH after 180 degree rotation around K. Select all statements that are true. Um, so we've got HEF, so this triangle here, rotating around K. So let's just take a look at what that looks like to rotate here. So remember, it looks like this. So we've got this H on top rotating to F on the bottom, okay, E rotating to G, and then the F on top rotating to H on the bottom. So that kind of helps you remember what a rotation does. All right, so triangle um, HGF, so HGF is congruent to FEH. So let's, um, so H, G, F, remember we got to look at the um, order of the statement, is congruent to F, E, H, which is good, because then it goes F, E, H here. So it's putting the blue H to the purple F, 
blue G to the purple E and then blue F to the purple H. So this is good. Triangle um, G, F, H. So here's G, F, H is congruent to triangle E, F, H. And that's bad because it's putting purple F with blue F. And those two angles are not the same. Remember, it had to rotate. So this one's bad. Um, angle K-H-E, so angle K-H-E, so this angle here is congruent to K-H-G, so K-H-G, so are those two angles congruent, and that's false, that happens in a reflection, but not a rotation. Um, angle G-H-K is this one. Is that congruent to EFK? So EFK is here, and that's true. Segment um, EH is congruent to segment GH. Those two are not necessarily congruent. Again, that would happen in a reflection, but not in a rotation. HG is congruent to FE. That is true. It'll rotate up onto that one. Whoops. And then HF is congruent, or sorry, FH is congruent to HF. And that's true because those are the exact same segment, so they'd have to be the same. Number five, line SD is the line of symmetry for this figure. Tyler says that um, pentagon ASDPX is congruent to SMDZH because AS and MS are corresponding. So let's take a look at this. So here's our line of symmetry. And um, his order says AS, so his goes ASDPX. And then the other one goes S, M, oops, S, M, and then it actually cuts across. So it goes S, M, D, Z, H. So that one doesn't even follow the correct order. So that's one of the reasons it could be incorrect. The other is that um, this one started at A. So here was the first letter and then went to S. So it went A to S. And then in this blue shape, it went um, S to M. And this angle does not match this angle. So A needed to match with M. So um, even though A, S, and S, M are corresponding segments, angle... A and angle S are not corresponding angles, and both sides and angles need to match in the congruence statement. And again, um, the one was kind of cut across the shape too, so you know that the second one was not a good statement or not a good order anyways i'm just going to put this up here um all right and then write an actual congruence statement for them that works and so i'm just going to start with this same first one that he did a s d p x is congruent to and so a went with m so this is going to start m and then s to S, D to D, um, and then P to Z, and X to H. Number six, triangle ABC is congruent to DEF. Select all statements that are a result of corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent. Um, so you can just go by these um, two statements. You can go by A, B, C, and just 
com compare the order D, E, F. So I like to kind of write them on top of each other sometimes to compare. You can also mark up the angles here. So A goes with D, um, B goes with E, and then C goes with F. And that'll kind of help you look at it too. Um, so AC is congruent to EF. So AC is the first and last. So it should go with DF, not EF. And you can look here too. So AC goes with one and three. EF goes with two and connects angle two to three. So that's not going to be good. Segment BC, so that's these last two letters here, is congruent to EF, the last two letters there. So those are corresponding, so that's good. Angle BAC is this one, congruent to EDF, this one, that is true. You can look at the middle letter for the vertex, so angle A to angle D and C in the statement. So in this one, um, B, C, A is this one. E, D, F is this one. Those are not corresponding, so that would be false. Um, and then C, B, A. So C, B, A is this one. Congruent to um, D, E, F, so this one. And that is true. Number seven, why uh, when triangle ABC is reflected across the line, AB, the image is ABD. Why is angle ACD, so this angle, congruent to angle ADB? So when we reflect this over, those are corresponding parts. And we know reflection gives us congruent triangles, so they are corresponding parts of um, congruent figures, so they need to be congruent. And then number eight, line um, DE is parallel to BC, so DE is parallel to BC. What's the measure? And now you don't have that, an actual number measure here, so they didn't give you any angle measures in numbers, just in these letters. So what is the measure of angle EAC? So they want to know this angle here. And remember, alternate interior angles, we're, we're taking this and rotating it this way. So this angle C would land here. So this would be C degrees. Okay, it's going to be the same here. So this one is C degrees. And then what's the measure of DAB? So this one, and that's going to be this angle B degrees rotating up. So this one's going to be B degrees.